Hi there, welcome to Nepi Invest, and welcome to the final trading day of the week, July the 12th, 2024. One of the more intriguing days of trading I have seen, not totally because of what happened on the Australian markets right now, but because of the American markets overnight. And I was quite stunned, I am being a little bit overdramatic, when I did look at the indices performance on the American markets at about 6 a.m. I uh, wouldn't call myself a stunned mullet, but it was an absolutely intriguing day on the American markets. And that has translated to our markets as well. And that's why the small odds is up 1.51%. But all tech is down 0.181%. So I will discuss this a little bit further in a second or so. Now, the agenda for today's video, I will have a look at a few tweets. And some of these tweets revolve around what happened on the American markets overnight. Also one tweet in regards to log versus linear chart when you're looking at the long term. Also have a look at something called RAS or RAS research, which I discovered just the other day. This is an interesting site. And then we'll have a look at the ASX today. Have a look at a few companies that did not make it into my top five stocks of the day. And after that, we'll have a look at the top five stocks of the day. Have a look at some charts. I have about five to seven charts lined up. And then maybe I'll touch upon some of your comments. If not, I'll talk about a few of your questions, uh, your comments in Saturday's answer and reply video, which will be quite long, hour and a half long or so. So the first thing I'm going to look at today is a few tweets. So let's get to it. Actually, before we have a look at a few tweets, let's go back to the American markets overnight. And why do I think it was a really intriguing session? Now, one of the reasons why it was really intriguing, we'll have a go to NASDAQ first. So NASDAQ was down 2.24%. Now, the first thing you have to understand is some really important economic information was released overnight. And this did lead to the NASDAQ being down a fair bit, but also led to one other indice up massively. So what data was this? Now in TradingView, if you go to an index, they have like the American flag down here. And that just actually brings up some information that was released overnight. So core inflation, um, month on month, year on year, uh, and inflation rates. And this was the key for the trading today. In fact, inflation lower than expected. In fact, inflation rate month on month was actually negative, forecasting 0.1% down 0.1%. And core inflation year on year is now at 3.3%. They were forecasting 3.4%. So, this was unexpected. You might say it's only by a small amount, but it was still unexpected. And this actually drove uh, the performance of many smaller companies in the United States. And there was, I would say, there was a bit of um, a bit of movement of shares from the largest companies in America to the smallest companies in America, because this was uh, a, a, a sort of a signal that there's a higher chance the interest rates are going to start dropping, maybe sooner than expected. And that's going to be beneficial for smaller companies, particularly smaller companies that are not profitable and not be so beneficial to the bigger companies in America. So that's why the NASDAQ was down 2.24% because of this turnover of shareholders from those bigger companies to the smaller companies. So there is a small cap uh, EDC in America called the Russell 2000. So NASDAQ was down 2.24%, S&P down 0.88%, Dow Jones relatively flat, but the Russell 2000 was up by 3.57%. And in fact, just because of this session, it is at a very important point. So what we do, actually, now why are you doing that, mouse? So what I'm going to just do is put this line here. So the Russell 2000 is at the highs we saw or they saw back in early April. So this is a potential breakout for small caps, and it has just to do with inflation and the possibility interest rates are going to stop. Uh, interest rates might drop sooner rather than later, and people are now starting to move to small cap 
companies because they are the ones who are really going to benefit from lowering interest rates and to fund these purchases of these small cap companies. People are taking their money out of the large caps, which is why the NASDAQ was down a bit, which is really interesting because that means my superannuation fund, which is full of the tech companies, was down big. But my other um, platform where I'm, I am buying and selling other American companies that are not tech companies was up big. So a massive difference between the performance of your portfolio, the massive, um, I mean, how to word this? If you looked at your performance of your portfolio, if you own a lot of American companies, it was really, um, it was really dependent on what sort of companies you own. So there's going to be a lot of people out there whose portfolios were down big while other people's portfolios were up big just because if they were tech heavy versus non-tech heavy. Anyway, so that was the really intriguing things happening in the American markets overnight. So now let's have a look at a few tweets and a few tweets in regards to this. Uh, this was one from David Rosenberg, talk, just talking about CPI, uh, cyclical CPI, in fact, getting back down to the levels we saw to uh, pre-interest rates rising, which is interesting enough. Uh, and then he also sent out a tweet. I just heard on CNBC that we have not seen a day like this with the S&P 500 down size and the Russell 2000 ripping since October 2008. Is that a factoid that should be making us feel good? The S&P 500 went down more than 20% over the issuing five months. And here it is one from Charlie Bilello. Today was one of the wildest days in markets you will ever see. And I actually have to agree with that. Absolutely insane day on the market. A complete reversal of all the major secular trends in recent years. The losers became winners. Uh, so the losers becoming winners include regional banks, small caps, REITs, Japanese yen, long duration of value, emerging markets, and developed international. The winners became losers. US dollar, US large caps, growth, NASDAQ 100, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Tech, Google, 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 Semiconductors, Netflix, Meta, NVIDIA, and also Tesla. NVIDIA down 5.6%, Tesla down 8.4%. Uh, and I'm trying to think where the best performing there is. Uh, Amazon, only down 2.4%. Oh, and actually Apple, only down 2.3%. So that is the main reason why we have seen sort of a bifurcation, if I'm using that word right, on the Australian markets today, when small caps have had a good day, up 1.5%, while tech is down 0.81%. So really intriguing. But overall, Australian markets has done well today. Now, there was another tweet I saw here, and I just had to reply to this tweet. This is from Zero Hedge, and this is looking at NASDAQ. And they're trying to apply that's in the massive bubble, uh, ridiculous stuff like that, because this goes back to the late 1970s. Uh, and in fact, there is a term for this. So they're trying to elude that this is a bubble. In fact, I had to apply, reply to this. Yes, I replied to this. So 1.2 million views, 4,700 likes. So what is the problem with this chart? It's not the output. Well, yeah, it's the, it's the output, but they're using the wrong um, type of chart. This is a linear chart. When you're looking at a 50-year period, you don't look at a linear chart. You look at a log chart. And so I'm really thankful that at least one person did reply to this saying, there it is. There's my reply. Uh, someone did reply to this. So someone else said, inflation, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then there was something talking about bubbles. Yeah, it's a bubble. It's called the one trillion more in debt every 90-day fin finance. Someone else said a bull market. and then someone else said bubble. And then someone, 007 Futures said, stop posting non-log charts. Uh, yeah. And then someone else says, this is absurd, everyday non-stop ramp. Okay. So let's go back to my tweet. I sent this uh, the wrong time. Only seven views, but that's okay. So this is the log chart of the NASDAQ at the same time period. Look at it. It's linear. That's exactly what you would expect. This is normal. Exactly what you want to see if you absolutely un understand why over a 40 year period that the other chart is what she, what is what actually you would expect over a 40, 50 year period. Now, if you understand compounding, this should be obvious to you. This is exactly what you should 
say when you're looking at long term because it comes back to compounding. And for those who don't quite understand compounding, this is how it works. Okay, so just imagine if you have a million dollars. And then, um, yeah, say you have a million dollars compared to someone who has $100,000. How hard is it to go from 1 million to 2 million compared to $100,000 to $1 million? So if you go from $100,000 to $1 million, that's a factor of 10. To going from $1 million to $2 million, that's a factor of one. However, if you go from $1 million to $2 million, that's an increase of $1 million, which is more than the increase from $100,000 to $1 million. That's compounding, and that is the importance of using log charts when you look in the log term. So if you go back to the NASDAQ in the 1970s, it was down to 75. So in looking at that, yes, about 75 or so. So if it doubled, went from 75 to 150. Now it's 17,000. To double the NASDAQ has to go from 17,000 to 34,000, which is a 17,000 increase. Back when it was 75, just thinking about a 17,000 increase was absurd. In fact, to get a 17,000 increase from 75, you have to go all the way to now. Yes, to now. Um, so that's why I was actually really intrigued by this. I just don't understand how people don't understand the concept that when you're looking at the long term, that sort of chart, that sort of a period, you have to look at long charts, not linear charts. But everyone's just thinking, oh, it's a bubble. Oh, my God, it's terrible. We're in a massive bubble. No, 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 no. Anyway, so I just had to talk about that. Uh, that particular tweet, and I don't even know who Zero Hedge is. Let's see if they are uh, someone important. Let's say who they are. They have 1.8 million followers. Okay, 1.8 million followers, yet they're putting out crap like that. Anyway, so that's the tweet I just want to talk about. Now let's have a look at the A. No, before we have a look at the ASX, I'm just glad I wrote this down. I actually wrote down what I wanted to do in order. Because if I didn't, I would have completely missed the next thing I want to do. And that is RAS Research. So I discovered this the other day. Uh, and do, do, who are they? Uh, okay, home. They are an independent research company or whatever who sent out or sent out or for free uh, research reports on companies that are not typically covered by the big research companies. Now, they do get paid by the companies, individual companies, but they do have a filter. So they don't do research reports for every single company that comes to them. They say no a lot to uh, companies that come. So they do pick and choose which risks or which companies they want to work with. So they call themselves the Independent Investment Research House for small cap and micro cap companies. So they do pick and choose. That's the most important thing. So let's have a look at some of the companies. And you can go to this site. All you have to do is just research, not research, Google RAS Group or RAS Research. Uh, I think you could do both. And they do have a list of companies here somewhere. Where are they? The companies. No, our research. Company research. And here are the companies. They actually um, have sent out some research reports on. Uh, and if you go down to the bottom, so Bell Financial Group actually goes all the way. I didn't realize it was so long. So many. So they do have quite a few companies. So I only go back to the start of, actually, no, I was going to say to the start of this year, but uh, that's all the way down here. So let's go to some of the most recent uh, research reports. Two on Pioneer Credit in the past few weeks. In fact, in the past week, which is a company I just purchased because I do think it's cheap. Now, someone did mention in my comments, this company does have a bit of debt, but the whole reason they have debt is because they're a, um, what do you call a debt collector. And to get these debts, they actually have to spend some money to get those debts. So I do understand why they do have debt. So it should not be a reason to be completely negative about uh, Pioneer Credit. So I do think the company is potentially cheap. Now, I haven't actually ha had a read or read, read, that's horrible, uh, have a read, read of this, of uh, RAS Research's uh, reports on Pioneer Credit. But it's interesting. Sunrise, Quantum Intellectual Property, which has been bought out. Uh, Point Terror. Yeah, they have research on Point Terra, which is interesting enough. I'm, I was a little bit surprised they accepted Point Terra. Pure Profile, Ballymore Resources, I've never heard of that company. Legacy Minerals, Santana Minerals, so quite a few mining companies here. Rent.com, Amero, 3DA. I have heard of this company, but I have not looked at that company. Bell Financial Group, which I do am a shareholder. Empire Energy, 
rocket DNA. So you can just see quite a few more for Pioneer Credit. Cash converters, uh, worker, fluent, Spectre, which is interesting. It's a very small cap company, that one, a micro cap, if you will. So yeah, so here is a site. In fact, let's have a look at the most recent Pioneer Credit because I haven't even opened up any of these research reports. Oh, you, it, oh you, it downloads. Okay. I'm going to see if it looks just like, a, yeah, it looks exactly like a typical research report you see if, uh, released by a, um, another fund manager who only covers uh, companies that are in the uh, ASX 50 or something like this. Uh, so Pioneer Credit, talk about the refinancing. They refinance, life finance costs. Uh, the share price currently is 56 cents. Uh, yeah, they probably have... Um, Valuation case here it is valuation case at two hundred fifty million previous two seventy eight million or one dollar and ninety four cents a share. So have a look at this uh, particular website or company, whatever you want to call it, Independent Research Group. There we go. Okay, so that's all I want to talk about in regards to RAS Research or Group. Now let's have a look at the ASX today. A really intriguing day on the market. We'll have a look at the best and worst performing indices, sectors, and also companies starting with the indices and we already know that real estate's had a pretty good day Indis discretionary good day healthcare good day financials good day and a really bad day for it in fact the i information technology sector down 1.38 percent following on to what happened in america now do i think this is a shift in investing styles strategies possibly just possibly at this stage there could be a little bit of an overreaction right now from the market uh, but yeah, this could be the shift, possible shift we are waiting for. Uh, indices, gold, a wonderful day for gold. Uh, small caps, wonderful day for small caps. Did I say, yeah, I said gold. Uh, oh, I said gay. I was going to say, did I say gay? Wonderful gay for gold. Uh, you know, small caps, wonderful day. Banks, wonderful day. And there's the XTX, uh, all tech down a fair bit. Now, let's have a look at the ASX 20, and we will determine which companies have had a bad day, which companies have had a good day. And I'd say about 15 companies, no, 14, no, 15 up, five down. And I could almost guarantee which companies are up, which companies are down. No, 14 up, six down. Uh, so we already know Goodman Group's going to be up. The banks are going to be up. Um, yeah, and the company's down. Wise Tech, REA Group, although REA Group sometimes gets lobbed into uh, the real estate section. Uh, so REA Group, Aristocut, uh, Wise Tech, uh, what else? Those are three are definitely down, I think. Let's have a look. There's Wise Tech down 3.45%. Oh, Goodman Group's down. That's interesting. Real Estate's had a good day. And I don't see REA Group, which is up, and Aristocut. In fact, Aristocut's had one of the best days. There you go. Uh, so Wise Tech was sort of a no-brainer for me, uh, down 3.45%. Uh, let's have a look at the best companies and West Farmers and NAB, Aristocrat, Crowell Bank and CSL. And yeah, I should have surmised that CSL was going to be a pretty good form performer today. In fact, CSL's, CSL's chart looks really good right now. I'm glad I am trading that as long as holding a long-term position. Okay, so let's have a look at the best performing and worst performing companies. And I do expect in the top gain, there's quite a few small cap companies have been, that have been beaten down. Including Point Terra, up 36.17%. Yes, 36.17%. Now, there is a reason behind that. Well, to be honest with you, they did release, this company did not make it in my top five, by the way. They did release a presentation today. Uh, so, do we really think the share price has rallied just because of this presentation? Or is there other reasons behind this? It could be a few reasons, this presentation uh, and the company's. Uh, share price has been sold off. So I will show you the chart for Point Terra at the end of the video. I've already decided some of the charts we'll be looking at. Uh, otherwise, going back to the top gators, a company called Galan Lithium up 24.24%. I did actually, this company did release something today and it was uh, HMW Project Update. I actually did open this up and I actually did put Glant Lithium into my Lithium watch list. So this is definitely another, actually, no, we'll have a look at the chart for this company right now. Uh, I opened up the announcement and, you know, it did nothing for me, but that's just me. And just have a look at this chart. 
uh, and this is the main reason. I just actually did have a look at this chart after I read their announcement. I went, not yet. Uh, so this has been a nice day for the company, but the share price has been absolutely beaten down. If you go back, not quite a year, if you go back to the end of 2022, share price of this company was $1.75. Now it's 20 cents. Uh, so pretty good day for Glan Lithium. Invest Smart up 23.81. So Invest Smart did release something today. Again, I missed this one. Uh, Invest Smart June 24 business update. Uh, I didn't see anything that particular announcement to get me overly excited, but that's me. I can be wrong. Uh, so they talked about funds under management is 611 million. Uh, funds increased by 3.2%. Um, total PMA accounts increased by 5.1%. So the company's growing. Yep, talking about financial results here, slightly profitable. I suppose they were unprofitable the previous quarter. Now they're profitable and operating profit of 168,000 and cash at bank up to 7.7 .7 million from 6.2 million. So it sounds okay. I look at the chart. Chart looked ugly, just like Glenn. I'm not investment cool. There it is, invest smart. Chart looks pretty ugly, huh? Yep, share price has dropped from 50 cents uh, back in late 2021 down to 13 cents. It does look like it's illiquidly traded as well. So how much trading? Yeah, two trades. I should not get excited about this. We've had two trades today. At 11, no, actually, one trade at 11.31. I suppose just someone buying on market, pushing share price up 23.8%. And if we look at the prices, yeah, there's one seller at 14 cents and the first seller is 11.5 cents. So if a seller says, oh, I'm just going to dump on market, the share price will go back to 11.5 cents. So I probably should not even have talked about InvestSmart. SKS Technologies. Is there any surprise which company is the top stock of the day? If you haven't seen the announcement released by SKS Technologies today, this will not, this should be a maybe not surprise. If you have seen the announcements released by SKS Technologies today, this won't be a shock to you. And I have added to my position. In fact, I added on open. Actually, it wasn't on open. It was just after open because I'll talk about talk about what I did this morning when it comes to this company. Satire. Uh, has been absolutely beaten down. I'll show you the chart for this company, up 19.7%, a nice little bump in the share price. Immutep, did Immutep make it? No, I completely missed Immutep. So let's have a look at Immutep. And then we'll have a look at the chart. So Immutep did release positive results in TACTI 3 for 1LHNSSCC cohort B patients. Okay, so it actually released two price sensitive announcements, just like SKS Technologies. Uh, and they talked about CPS lower than below one. I uh, don't really understand much in this particular announcement. However, the market liked it up about 20%. So let's have a look at the chart. Is this a breakout? That's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for breakouts. Well, mm, okay. Yeah, I, the share price was looking good. The chart was looking good until what happened a few weeks ago on the 27th of June. And I remember talking about this company back then. So 27th of June, positive top line results from PH2B in neck, head and neck cancer. This could be the company where they didn't provide some information in their results, like the P thing, the P thingy. And someone didn't mention, I did read this. The reason why the share price got sold off is they didn't include the P thing. And they also referred it to Clinivell. Clinivell released an announcement which one was it? This one here. So I'll be able to tell you what exactly, because I said this company included it. Something like a P. I am not a biology person. Here it is. P. I don't know what P is, but apparently this P is very important. And the reason they says that, uh, they said P a few places here. The reason why Inumatep got sold off is because they didn't include this P number. Well, Clinivelle did, and Clinivelle share price rallied, was it 10, 15% on this particular day, but then dropped away because of the negative sentiment overall, or long-term negative sentiment in the company. Anyway, so Inumitaps had an interesting day. Our share price has jumped up. Uh, let's go back to the top gators. I was going to say there's going to be a few uh, beaten down tech companies, but not quite as much as I thought there was going to be. Definitely satire. Uh, anyway, that's it. Oh, Achilles Resources had a nice bounce. Excellent, because I am trading that right now. So let's go by market cap. Maybe we'll see more. So Clarity Pharmaceuticals. I'll show you the chart for that company. 
Yes, I'm going to show you the chart for Clarity Pharmaceuticals. Drone Shields had another good day. That has that is definitely not a beaten down company. Uh, Orobanda had a good day after a bad day. Yes, no, no, another good day yesterday. Another one of those gold producing companies doing really well. Botanics Pharmaceuticals has had a bounce, and I'm happy with that because I'm also trading that company. Uh, Imogen. Did I say Imogen, or maybe I'm just thinking of Imutep? No, oh, Imogen was the other day. And what else do we have here? Uh, Metavisor, Demerix, uh, Coast Entertainment Group has come in number four of my top stocks of the day, up 8.9%. Uh, so that's good. Biome, another great day. Appen, beaten down tech company, up 9.7%. Also Metavisor, another good day for that company as well, but that's not a beaten down tech company. Okay, so let's have a look at the worst performing companies and we'll see if there's any any sort of pattern within this. Uh, Terra Metals, down 18.1%. This is another chart I'm going to show you at the end of the video. There was a mention of this particular company in my comment section uh, from ShagMG33. I might talk about this particular comment towards the end of the video if I have time. Uh, so I'll show you the chart for TM1 later in the video. Uh, and Optiscan is another company I'm following quite closely because uh, chart is looking pretty good. Uh, this sort of day is a possible opportunity. Uh, Sinai Milk had a really good day yesterday. Now it's sold off or being sold, which is understandable. And what company? What is that company? WTM. WTM. Uh, so that's a completely different company than Western Mines. Okay. And now let's have a look by market cap. Oh, GR Engineering Services. Easy, my top five coming in and number two. There you go. Coming on to two. They've had a sort of a negative day, down 4.3%. Has been in the past a market, darling. Uh, Jenica of Therapeutics down 4.84%. I've been waiting for the share price of that company to pull back, but possible buy the dip opportunity. Uh, Agriman was featured uh, as a good performing company a few days ago. And that's it. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is have a look at a few companies that did not make it in my top five announcements of the day. Uh, just briefly, or maybe not briefly. The first one is Medical Device or Developments International. Uh, share price of this company has beaten down. They did an asset review and non-cash write-down. Now, it doesn't say it sound positive uh, when you look at the title. However, I did find some positiveness within this announcement, uh, particularly just in the highlight section right here. So underlying EBIT in financial year 24 to be strongly improved on financial year 23 in line with expectations, that in a way is good news. The group remains on track to deliver positive operating cash flows by the end of financial year 25. Uh, if they can achieve that, they're moving in the right direction. So let's have a look at the chart for this company. And I've been following this company for over a decade, and I've never, ever bought some shares in this company. And it's probably not going to change just yet. But if they can become operating cash flow and free cash flow positive, profitable, uh, the chart will look significantly different. In fact, the share price will be more than likely in an uptrend by then. But share price is still in the downtrend, even though the share price has bounced in the last week or so. Mark up this company, according to Trading View, is only $45 million, which is significantly lower than it used to be because at one point, the share price of this company got to $12 back in early 2020, just prior to COVID-19. Now, they might have done a few couple raisings since then, but I would hazard a guess, and I can tell you right now, that the market back then would have been maybe towards $1 billion. Let's have a look. I can tell you right here via Finit Chat. Yes, in 2020. Now, that's a share price. Need to look at the market cap. The market cap of this company was as high as 721 million. So they've probably done a few capital raising since then. Uh, just shows you from $721 million market to 45. Things have not gone well for this company over the past four years. Just like the next company, Numi, used to be called Freedom Foods. This used to be a market darling company. And I did, I remember doing research. Why do I why do people say that? I remember doing research. You don't have to say the I remember because everything you talk about in regards to you, your past is a memory. Okay. Back about eight years ago, maybe. I don't sometimes I don't know exactly which year I'm talking about. I did research on this company and I just didn't understand 
the love for this company. Back then it was Freedom Food. And I'll discuss why in a second. So if you just have a look at Numi, which includes their time as Freedom Foods, uh, this company had some big problems a few years ago. I don't know exactly what it was. This company back in, we'll go to five, 10 years. This company had a market cap of a billion dollars. No, in fact, it had a market cap of one point six billion. Yes, billion dollars in 2018. The market cap of this company now is $33 million. So this makes uh, medical developments look like a look like a great performing company. Now, the reason why I just didn't understand this company comes back to their financial statements. Not understand, not understand it, but I just didn't understand why the market loved this company. Uh, if you go to the look at the chart for Numi. Uh, and we'll look at the day weekly chart. Share price of this company as free and foods goes high as almost, yeah, probably $7 or so. Yeah, $7 back in yeah, 2018. And then something bad happened to this company back in 2020. Uh, yeah, I can't remember exactly what, but you can just see the share price in one week went, <laughs> fell like a rock. In fact, I'd say this company was in suspension for a while. Yeah, it was in suspension for about a year from June 2020 to March 2021. Now, the reason why I didn't understand why the market loved this company, uh, in fact, you can see the market cap just in FinChat's first line, $1.6 billion in 2018. I'll just go through the, I'll go, this is using FinChat. Now, I still remember, so they had increasing revenues, really good increase in revenues. So let's have a look at the revenues. Really beautiful increase in revenues from 2014 through to 2019. In fact, I'm just going to show you up to 2019 because uh, if you just looked at this, you went, oh, what amazing revenues. Now, the first knock against this company was the margins. During the same time, the margins were decreasing, which is mm, the company was profitable. The company was profitable. Let's go back to the income statement. Get rid of the, get rid of the, get rid of the revenue. Suppose we can get rid of the gross margins. So the company was profitable. In fact, in 2016, they had a profit of $50 million. And that profit fell to 7.5 in 2017 and $12.7 million profit in 2018. Remember, the market cap of this company got to $1.6 billion in 2018. And then 2019, they had a massive loss, probably some write downs or something. But the reason why I didn't understand the market's fascination or love with this company comes back to uh, cash flows. Uh, so they had a pretty good. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'll get rid of income. And what I'm going to show you is the cash flow from operations. So if you just, dis actually, what I'll do is I'll get rid of 2019 as well. So if you have a look at cash flow from operations, you say, oh, improving cash flow from operations from 2017, 2018 went to 24.4 million in that particular year. But cash flow from operations were really low during this period, below $7 million. Uh, between 2014 and 2017. But if you go to the investing activities, have a look at capital expenditure. For every year, capital expenditure increased significantly. Went from $19 million or $20 million in 2014, $50 million in 2015, $64 million in 2016, $138 million capital expenditure in 2017, and $122 million capital expenditure in 2018. This company was significantly free cash flow negative. So let's have a look, look at the free cash flow of this company during this five-year period when the market loved this company. So this company was free cash flow negative every single year. In fact, the best year was negative $13 million free cash flow in 2014, as bad as $133 million in 2017. So I actually did look at this and went, why does a market love this company? Market had $1.6 billion in 2018. I just did not understand it. And just going through this process, I had no desire to take a position in this company, even though if you go back to the chart, is this a log chart? No, no, it's, and that's right. If you go back to it's like 2012 to 2016, the share price in this company, just beautiful chart. Now we started to see the share price turn over. Uh, in fact, if you look at the daily chart and you go back, to 2018. I can't remember exactly when I did research. It would have been, it would have been 2018. It would have been before that. Uh, if we go back, yeah, it would have been before 2018. It might have been 2016. And if you look at the period between 2012 and 2016, chart looks brilliant. 
Really nice looking chart, particularly 2013. Look at that. That's probably when I discovered this company because the share price just went bonkers in 2012 and 13. But I did my research, looked at the balance, the, the financial statements, and I just did not understand what the market saw. And I just thought I was missing something. And then the bad things happened. I went, hmm, it's not a surprise. Not a surprise to me. So that's new me. Now let's get to the top five stocks of the day. Coming in at number five, we have AI Media Technology. Share price down 5.7% today. However, in saying that, the share price of this company in the past few weeks has risen from uh, the low 30s to 44 cents at closing yesterday. In fact, it rallied 14.3%. And this company did pop up on my radar a few days ago because of what's happened with the share price. And in fact, I'll show you the chart first and you'll be able to understand why this company has popped up. In fact, we have to go to present day, don't we? There we go. So you can, I'm hoping you can understand why this company popped up on my radar. I don't know why it looks so small. Uh, so share price sort of going sideways, been going sideways since June 2022. So almost a two-year consolidation period. And the share price was having trouble getting above 40 cents. Why? Look, just go back to August 2022, November 2022, and February 2024. The share price on each of those occasions struggled to get above that level. And then yesterday, what happened? Share price blew above 40 cents on massive strength. When I say massive strength, I'm talking about volume. And just look at that one-day candlestick, a really strong one-day candlestick. So for some reason, the market has fallen in love with this company over the past few, we'll, we'll say the past two weeks. Actually, we'll say the past week and a half. Now, we'll go back to the first signal was on the 18th of June when the share price rallied 15%. And that's a really bullish one-day candlestick. And I'm learning more and more that these one-day candlesticks you see, these really bullish one-day candlesticks, have a lot of signal, a lot of important signal. Uh, and that was the start of the rally in this company's share price. After that, share price went sideways, but it's okay. Then we saw another rally. Okay, so why is this company in my top or in my top five stocks of the day? Comes back to their response to the price query from the ASX. So the ASX is asking AI Media, why is your share price running like this when you have not released any news flow? And I always open these announcements up because you can get some information, some important information about the company and information about what could be driving the share price. So, of course, answer one was no, which is exactly uh, the answer most companies provide. Not always, but mostly. And then question two is not applicable. Question three is the most important question in my mind when it comes to these announcements because this is when the management can sort of surmise what is causing the share price to run. That's exactly what the question is. Is there any other reason behind this? Uh, for instance, uh, this, is, this is the exact question three without showing you the answer. If the answer to question one is no, which is uh, uh, has a company any information that is not announced in the market that could explain why the share price is rallying? Typically, the answer is no, because that means if the share price is running, there's inside information that has been leaked to someone or there's insider trading and you don't want that hanging on your head. And question three, is there any other reason that management have? And it's always in interesting information, not always, almost always interesting information. So let's have a look. So AI Media is aware that a blog post on Substack entitled When AI Meets TV, AI Media was retweeted and endorsed by an Australian fund manager Ron Shamgar on the 11th of July, 2024. So let's go have a look at this tweet. In fact, I have seen this guy's tweets pop up everywhere. So Ron Shagmar. And why is it not popping it popping up? Did I spell that right? Right? Yeah. Sh oh, Shagmar. There we go. Why? Can't suspend it. Is that the right one? Ron Shamgar. Shamgar. Ron Shamgar. Sorry, Ron, for getting your name completely wrong. So head of Aussie Equities at Tamim, founder of TBF Small Caps. 9,400 followers. Uh, really good results from uh, their flagship or cup fund. Delivered 35.73% for financial year 24. That's pretty good. 
Okay. Ooh, that's an interesting tweet. In fact, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to buy some uh, Clarity Pharmaceuticals because their imaging tech and therapeutic is way better with IP mode than Telix. Okay. Talking about uh, and. What day? 11th of. Why? 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 Okay. I'm not going to go through this. Uh, maybe I should do AI media. AIM. Hmm. Quite a few. Uh... Quite a few tweets about AI media. Anyhow, um, that's what I'm going to linger on this particular thing. And anyway, so uh, AI media had no involvement in the blog post or social media activity, and the company is not aware of any other explanation for the recent trading in its securities. It could be this. It could be as simple as this particular tweet and this particular blog post, but uh, it could be something else. We just don't know, as they say. But anyway, the chart looks interesting for AI media, a potential breakout for this company. And I'm always looking for breakouts. And when I do see one, I'm always paying attention. And AI media could be breaking out as we speak. And when, when I say as we speak, I'm talking about the last few trading days, including today. So coming in number five, we have AI media technologies. Coming in number four, we have Company I'm not that interested in, Coast Entertainment Holdings, but the share price is up 7.8%. And just because I may not be interested in this company doesn't mean you don't have to be. You might like this company. They released their financial year 24 preliminary results or update. Uh, and I suppose the results or the update is pretty good. Uh, I'm not that interested. But aggregate, so for those who don't know, this company owns um, Dreamworld, all those theme parks. They sold out of probably the best asset, which was the, what was it called? The main, what was it called? The uh, the uh, the um, thingy in America, main something, main event or something like that. They sold out of that, but they own uh, Dreamworld, Wiggles Big Red Boat Coaster. And I just think uh, theme parks, that's the best way to say it. They own a lot of theme parks uh, and that sort of thing. And maybe that's all they own. So I'm not that interested in this company, but the market liked it. Uh, things are moving in the right direction for the company, but who knows? Uh, you know, you would suppose with the cost of living of pressures, instead of going overseas, more Australians will maybe go to Gold Coast and go to Dreamworld. I just don't know. Uh, so let's have a look at the chart for Coast's Entertainment Holdings. They used to be called, what did they used to be called? It started with A. Where's my, uh, started with a, uh, as soon as I say, I'm going to kick myself. Ardent Leisure. It used to be called Ardent Leisure. Leisure. And the worst thing about um, uh, Trading View is when they changed the name, they just got rid of Argent, Ardent Leisure's chart. So it looks like this can't be just listed, but now they've been longer on the ASX. And when I look at this chart, not, not interested at all with Coast Entertainment, but uh, if you are interested, maybe making investment in a company that owns theme parks, maybe you're a theme park enjoyer. I don't mind going to the odd theme park here and there. I do like roller coasters, uh, just not for me. But uh, I don't want to be too biased in the selection of top five stocks of the day. So I've decided to choose this company coming in at number four. Uh, coming in number three, Coventry Group. Training update. I love these announcements. Training update. You're going to get me. If a company releases a training update, I'm always going to open it up. And obviously, well, share price is only up 1.7%. was up a little bit more during the day. It got to a high of $1.44, which uh, means the share price would have been up maybe almost 10%. Not quite. We'll say about 6 or 7%. Uh, so the trading update sounded pretty good. Uh, it's not a big company. Uh, they don't sell really interesting stuff. So we're talking about, they do mention what they sell here. Uh, trade distribution and fluid systems. If you go to the bat section, which I don't have, uh, so they sell that sort of stuff. Um, they also acquired a company called Steel Masters. Anyway, everything's up. Everything's positive. So it's trade distribution up 6.3%. 
Fluid Systems up 9.9%. Uh, EBITDA, unordered EBITDA, up 22.4%. So group sales up 3.7%. EBITDA up 22.4%. So they have increased their margins, which is also quite interesting. Do they mention that at all here? No. They also have some buy side and sell side initiatives. Just by reading this, uh, blurb from Robert Bullis, this group CEO, demand remains positive in the mining and resources sector, and there is some short-term softening in the other Australian states. Economic conditions remain challenging in the short term in New Zealand. That's another reason why I like these um, sort of announcements. A lot of times uh, the company will uh, try to explain why trading is better or worse than expected, and you get an idea of what's actually happening out there. And when otherwise, you might not get an eye or have an idea. So let's have a look at the chart for this company, CYG, Coventry Group. And it, it was looking good back in late last year. It was looking good, but yeah, not looking as good today. So an interesting company, Coventry Group. If you look at the weekly chart, you'll, you'll see that this is, oh, why does Comsec do that? No, I don't want that. I want auto fit. There we go. If you look at the weekly chart for Coventry Group, it's this is not the chart of a high quality company. In fact, it's the chart of a low quality company that is not doing much or has not done much. So this is definitely just a trade if ever you buy this company. Unless they get new management and the new management is really, really good. I'm not saying the current management is not good, but I'm just saying maybe the current management has only been there for a short period of time. I don't know. Don't know this company at all. But Coverage Group did release a trading update. So if you've released a trading update or a company releases a trading update, I'm more than likely going to feature that company. Coming in at number two, we have GR Engineering, and they did release something you don't want to see as a shareholder. A market update. So again, market update, trading update. I'm going to open up these announcements. And a GR, or GR Engineering, uh, Refers to announcement. So this is out of the company's control. That's the first thing. So you can't you can't think negatively of management because of this update. Refers to announcement made by BHP. So this company has a relationship with BHP. So this is some sort of engineering services company. Uh, on 11th of July, with respect to the temporary suspension of Nickel West Operations and the West Musgrave Project, uh, BHP stated that a transition period will commence from July 24 with operations to be suspended in October 24 and handover activities for temporary suspension will be completed in December 2024. Um, so in April 2023, GR Engineering entered into contracts with BHP for the design and construction works of the West Musgrave project in WA. And they do mention that there won't be an impact on the company's revenue in EBITDA for this year, but next year, they expect revenue to be, um, they, they say here, GR Engineering is forecasting the revenue from the West Musgrave project will be eight up to $80 million lower than expected. So this is, in a way, a revenue downgrade, hence the sell off. Now, I actually did have a look at this company's chart. So the ticket code is GNG, yeah, GNG. And funny enough, uh, this is the weekly chart. This company was a bit of a market darling, 2021 into 2022. I still remember looking at the chart going, ooh, it's looking pretty. Uh, if we go back to that, yeah, look at that beautiful chart. Beautiful chart back in, yeah, from middle of 2020 through 2021. You could have bought this company about 90 cents and sold it at 225. Uh, and then you can see the chart, share price all going sideways from there, not much movement. And in fact, still going sideways. And then the share price moved into a downtrend not that long ago. And in fact, this was a bit of a sign that there's no reason to be holding shares in this company because it's not a high quality company uh, because of what they do. And uh, the sh share price moved into a downtrend and then they released these particular announcements. Share price has moved up today though, however. So big volume coming through and the share price has been sold into. So share price um, was down as low as a dollar and 90 cents. So a little bit of buying today. Little by and more than likely, if we look at the five minute chart, the low would have been reached in probably the first 10 15 minutes of trading. In fact, the low was reached in the first five minutes of trading on open. Sometimes it doesn't pay to sell on open or even buy on open. So that's GR Engineering coming in number two. Hopefully, you don't own any shares in this company, uh, but hopefully, you own shares in this company. SKS Technologies 
without doubt, the stock of the day with a bullet, actually not a bullet. Uh, it was clear sky between company number one and company number two. In fact, if you added the merits of the other four companies within this top five stocks of the day, they don't even come close to SKS Technologies. So on Monday morning, before 9 a.m., before 10 a.m., I was not a shareholder of this company. And now I have bought twice in this week on the back of positive announcements. Yes, twice. So in fact, if you have a look at the announcements, the first one was released on the 8th of July, the Monday, that's Monday, wasn't it? Yeah, Monday at 9.21 a.m. SKS market update, again, market update, financial year 24 revenue upgrade. So in the title, market update upgrade. Um, the weird thing, I saw that particular announcement and I went, oh, the share price is going to open pretty nicely. It opened 4% higher at a dollar and four cents. I bought on open at a dollar and four cents. I was willing to buy up to buy shares at this company on Monday morning up to $1.10. And I put my bid in at dollar and 10 cents. I was willing to do that. And I was surprised and absolutely flabbergasted the share price only opened at dollar four cents. I don't think many people saw the announcement. Then today, a little bit of a shock and a surprise when I went to my computer and I logged in and I actually I didn't log in because I'm always logged in, but I, I looked at the announcements and I saw two announcements, two price sensitive announcements from this company. If they just released one, it would have been enough, but two in one day, $90 million dollar data center award and also a financial year 25 revenue forecast, which was or is quite bullish. So let's have a look at the first announcement. Okay, so I don't know a lot about uh, data centers, but I do know that hyperspace data centers are the thing. Uh, that's one thing. So this company has been awarded a $90 million plus million, I said million twice, didn't I? $90 million plus data center project with built inclusive of the early works package announced on the 21st of May for an international hyperscale data center in Melbourne to completed by August 2025. Yes, an international hyperscale data center. Okay, and they also mention other stuff down below. And what they'll be doing is uh, a lot of stuff. Uh, they will undertake the electrical design and construction works of this new stage of the project, including high and low voltage electrical infrastructure, uh, and it goes on and on. Um, yeah. They also, in Matthew Jinks, the CEO, and I'm going to have to say here, I'm a big fan of Matthew Jinks. I've never spoken to him. He's the only CEO of a company that has reached out to me. Yes, I'm not. I have no desire to talk to uh, CEOs or that sort of thing. But uh, this was the only time I thought, hmm, maybe I should have a chat with Matthew Jinks because he's the only CEO of an Australian listed company that has reached out to me. And uh, he just said, hey, if you want any information about this company, uh, he said uh, he saw one of my videos on um, SKS Technologies. He said, hey, if you want any full information, I'm always here. So I always have a little bit of a soft spot for SKS Technologies just because of that. But he said uh, it was also indicative of the strength of the pipeline of opportunities in the data center sector, which saw $18 billion of projects announced for hyperscale data centers in Melbourne and Sydney in 2023 alone. So this particular announcement on itself is exciting. And then they released another announcement a minute later. And this was financial year 25, revenue forecast. So remember, they upgraded their revenue for financial year 24 from $120 million to $230 million. Now they expect total revenue for financial year 25 to be approximately $200 million. $200 million. So increasing revenue from $130 million to $200 million. So more than a 50% increase in revenue yeah, in one year. That is the significant tailwinds behind this company right now because of AI and data centers. Uh, and that's the reason why the share price is up 20%. So what did I do when I read these? I put a bid in. Put two bids in, actually. So I put in an initial bid at $1.18. I thought, oh, if this is an identical situation to Monday, the share price won't increase much on open. But it did. Share price actually opened at $1.31. 
Uh, I put in another bid when it was pretty obvious the share price was going to open up a little bit higher. So I bid in that $1.30. That was my limit. That's as high as I wanted to go. And the share price opened at $1.31. I went, ah, oh, why does the share price have to open at $1.31? So it didn't take long for my bid to get hit. Share price actually got to a low of $1.19 for some reason. So very close to my initial bid at $1.18. So I'm glad I actually lifted it. I still have that $1.18 bid in. Oh, I sort of wish it went to a dollar eighteen. Jeez. Uh, and the share price now is a dollar thirty-seven and a half cents. If you have a look at the five-minute chart for this company, so let's let's remain at the five-minute chart because we're already there. So where was there's there's me buying. There it is, me buying. I've already got it down there. Me buying shares on open and yeah, the share price then rallied. In the next 30, 40, 50 minutes, the share price went from a dollar four to almost a dollar twenty. And the share price pulled back. No concern. And today, yeah, the share price, oh, the share price went to a dollar nineteen in the first uh 10 minutes of trading. I completely missed. Oh, wait, no, that's wrong. No, 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 no. The share price didn't get to a dollar nineteen after I bought. The share price actually opened via GX at a dollar fifteen or dollar nineteen and a half. So I'm going to just show you the course of sales. I don't remember now. So in Chiax, CXA, there were a couple of buys at $1.19, $1.20 before ASX opened. Yeah, that's why we have the low of $1.19 and a half. The share price never got that after. The, I think the closest it got was $1.25. Yeah, there is $1.25 at $10.26. Just imagine you're selling at $1.25. It's just silly. This is the sort of day you don't sell. You just don't sell on this sort of day. You maintain a holding in your shares because there's so much tailwinds behind this company. And the chart. I don't have to say anything about this chart. I can't believe this particular video is going for almost one hour because I was still going to go through some charts. No comments. Don't have time for any comments. Uh, so let's have a look at some charts because I did promise that. 3DP or Point Terra. Uh, share price up 56%. Jeez. 31.9%. Let's just have a look at... 38%. If I the share price was rallying just before this. Share price has uh, doubled um, since the 19th of June. There we go. That was a low. There's no reason, there was no reason for me to get interested in this company. I do have a small position in Point Terra. When I say small, I'm meaning small. So even though share price has doubled, my holding has, I suppose, has doubled. That's good enough. This is this could be because the overall change in sentiment, a slight change in sentiment in the of the market. This could be the start of good things for Point Terra. Now, the particular presentation, I was like, mm, so what? But you can't discount a day like this. Now, we saw a similar day like this back in July last year, 28th of July. Share price on that particular day rose 116%. And then we saw massive selling coming in. So that could happen from here. I just don't know. But the share price is at a uh, at least a three month high, almost a three month, yeah, three month high, yeah, it is a three month high, yeah. Although back in July, it wasn't quite a three month high. No, it was a three month high, sorry, but not quite a six month high. So that's Point Terra starting to look more interesting, but I wouldn't say this has me uh, adding to my position in this company just yet as a trade. Uh, Emutep. I've only showed you Imitap, mean, haven't I? Yeah. Satire. Uh, a nice little bounce from Satire, two day bounce. Share price has gone from $1.20 to $1.62. I'd, and share price was as high as $1.80 today. I have no interest in this. I think this has just been a dead cat bounce. So you can see the volume hasn't been big at all. You, this sort of bounces, you want big volume coming through. So there's not much conviction in the buying right now. Uh, and I would say the share price will fall significantly from here. Uh, so no interest at all in satire, but I just had a look at the chart because of the bounce today. Clarity Pharmaceuticals, I've been meaning to buy shares in this company for a long time, and I don't know why I haven't. So I was going to buy shares in this period here, then I didn't. So $2.60, and the share price has more than doubled since then. And the whole reason is because I'm a big Telex Pharmaceuticals shareholder, shareholder, and I believe there is potential that Clarity Pharmaceuticals products would supersede Telex Pharmaceuticals products, but that's many years down the road, just many, many years down the road. Uh, that's Clarity Pharmaceuticals, TM1, Terra Metals, 
Uh, so there was a comment from ChamGG. TM1 is another resource stock worth the following. And this company did pop up on my radar because this chart, if you take away the longer term ribbon, this chart is starting to look a little bit more interesting. A long period, a uh, long consolidation period, and then the share price on the 20th of June shot up. Share price since then had been going sideways. Volume remained quite healthy. Uh, the last two days, share price rallied 17 and 20%. Even though share price is down 19%, that's okay because the share price has rallied a lot. In fact, if you look at the five-minute chart, in fact, I'll look at the one-hourly chart. I do like to look at one hourly charts for these companies. If you look at the one hourly chart, yeah, it's just a little bit of a pullback. The chart still looks really bullish. Uh, I like to see the share price get above 10 cents. And again, share price got above 10 cents and pulled back. 10 cents is a really natural, powerful uh, support or resistance level. So Terra Metals, do I have this? Yeah, I have this in my high volume spec. Definitely one to continue following, in my opinion. Back to oil or OptiScan. And yeah, we saw a beautiful rally in this company's share price. And now the pullback. I want to see some buying coming in. Looks like we might have seen some buying coming in between 18 and 19 cents. The reason I say that is if you have a look at the five-minute chart, hopefully you can see it in this. Oh, you can't really see it just yet, but it has been a bounce. Yeah, it has been a little bit of a bounce and some volume coming in. Uh, so a little bit of volume on the way down, but we need to see a little bit of interest as the share price falls. Possibly we have seen that right now, uh, but uh, I'd like to see a little bit of confirmation um, with, I'd like to see a little bit of confirmation that this has been a short-term bottom and the share price can go back into an uptrend. But definitely, definitely one I'm thinking of taking a trading position in. Uh, Agenica, this one definitely been on my radar. This is a beautiful chart. I like this chart. Uh, there's been nice little dips, rallies, dips, rallies, dips. And generally, if you look at the volume, increasing volume through the whole period, um, that's exactly what I like. The last four trading days, share price going sideways. So a couple of good days, couple of, no, three bad days, one good day. But overall, uh, share price of this company is in an uptrend, beautiful uptrend. i just like to see the share price just pull back to about 82 cents. I'd love to see that. And then I could take a trading position in this company. Now, a bit of an update, oh, CSL. So this will be my last chart of the day, I expect. And this is a beautiful looking chart, a potentially beautiful looking chart. I just want to see the share price get to an all time high. And if it does that, I think it could be blue sky head for CSL. But I took a position, a trading position in this company at 292. So it's up to $306. That's pretty good. So it's like a, what's that? Seven, 8% rise. Uh, a couple of updates from companies that had a good day yesterday. The first one was seven C seven A Clara Pharmaceuticals flat. In fact, I was going to say I did say that uh, CSL was my last chart of the day. Well, I just lied. And yeah, so I was unsure whether yesterday's candlestick was bullish because there was a large shadow. Uh, to above the main body, share price went from 2.8 cents to 1.7 cents. So, so there was some selling, and it's obvious why they were selling because the share price was in a downtrend. Today, we haven't seen much selling. In fact, volume really light. Uh, when I say light volume, only 793,000 shares traded. Yesterday, there was 11 million. So massive pullback in volume. So that has me a little bit unsure as well. But yesterday, share price rallied 54%. And the other one was um, a company called. Augustus Minerals, share price yesterday rallied 140% or something, 144.74%. You'll notice there's been no trade in this company. And the management did exactly what they should do, but they could have waited a little bit. They are doing a couple of raising. So they saw the share price rally a lot yesterday. They went, we have to take opportunity and do a couple of raising. But the share price could have rallied even further. I think they're just, share price has gone up. We're unlocking the couple of raising at these prices. I do think this could have been a breakout for the company and maybe, maybe not. Maybe this capital raising will put a lid on the rally in the share price because the capital raising will be done at a discount. I would say maybe a 20% discount and that could uh, sh uh, that could suppress 
any sort of sentiment in this company. Okay, that's all I have for today's video. If you have any questions, any thoughts, leave those in the comment section of this particular video. Otherwise, I'm not a financial advisor. If you need financial advice, make sure you seek out someone who is qualified and can speak to your own financial needs. That's it for the video. Have a good day. Bye.